very much, Senator Higgins. Now, our last speaker, Senator O'Donnell, you have five minutes. Go ahead. Minister, I want to begin my remarks with a quote. Uh, to the nationalist people in Northern Ireland, I want to assure you that we have protected your interests throughout these negotiations. Your birthright as Irish citizens, and therefore as EU citizens, will be protected. There will be no hard border on our island. You will never again be left behind by an Irish government. These rights will, of course, be available to everyone in Northern Ireland who chooses to exercise his or her right to be an Irish citizen, regardless of their political persuasions or religious beliefs. Uh, Minister, unfortunately, with the decision that we are going to uh, probably inevitably take here tonight, uh, government's commitment uh, has fallen at the first hurdle. We have been left behind because the most basic entitlement and right of any citizen is the right to vote, the right to a franchise, the right to elect. Uh, representation to whatever forum uh, is democratically available to you. And while, uh, just in reference to some of the earlier remarks, while I don't believe Senator uh, Mernian O'Connor in her heart of hearts believed half of what she was saying uh, there this evening, um, I do have to take issue uh, with the notion that, you know, on one hand, you're saying we should have a strong voice in Europe, while at the same time denying a strong voice to your fellow citizens uh, in the North. And then imagine coming in and saying uh, in this uh, elected institution that giving people a vote, giving them a franchise, would be somehow undemocratic. I just find that really off the wall uh, in terms of uh, the political uh, and electoral process. I also equally find it uh, massively offensive. Um, and I actually resent and begrudge the view that says to me that I and the hundreds of thousands of people like, like me in the northern part of this country uh, aren't just feeling as lesser Irish citizens, but by the actions here tonight are being shown legislatively that they're lesser citizens because they've been denied this right to vote. And I note what the leader uh, said in relation to Fine Gael's own actions during the week. And look, listen, at the end of the day, that's a matter for uh, Fine Gael, and they'll take the political uh, decisions they want to take. And if Mark Durgan wants to run for Fine Gael, if he wants to run for the European Parliament, that's entirely his own decision. But he should be able to run in his native city. He should be able to run in Derry. Derry, call him, kill you. That's where he should be standing and seeking uh, votes the same way uh, uh, as any other candidate who wants to put themselves forward. Minister, when Britain leaves the EU, the first human right, uh, which will be denied to the people of the North, unionist and nationalist, is the right to vote in an EU election, the right to have their voice heard in the EU by electing an EU candidate. And this is particularly important given the fact that we voted to remain in the EU and are being dragged out of it against our will. It would be universally welcomed across the North if the Irish Government were to allocate uh, the two seats uh, to that constituency. And it would restore uh, the democratic needs of the people there, uh, which has been undemocratically and sum summarily removed from them by the British Government and the DUP. Yesterday, the Shannon Special Select Committee on Brexit Minister visited the North. Um, and it was actually a dizzying day uh, we met uh, that uh, sheer amount uh, of groups and organisations and uh, individuals. And almost universally, every one of them, uh, whether they were legal professors and academics, whether they were practicing uh, solicitors, uh, all agreed that the Irish government were able to do this, that there was no legal impediment uh, upon them from allocating these two seats uh, in the north. That, that wasn't, uh, although it is my view, but that was the express view uh, of those uh, uh, experts yesterday. And talk to your colleagues. Talk to your colleagues in Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil should talk to their colleagues in uh, their own party, because each and every one of them were significantly moved by what they heard yesterday. That not only was there a legal rationale against this decision by government and for the decision to allocate the two seats north, but there was a real palpable resentment uh, at what was happening here and a real sense uh, of a loss uh, of rights. So the Irish government can fill the democratic gap, gap minister created by the British government if they allocated the two seats uh, northwards. The majority who voted uh, to remain uh, are the advance guard of democratic politics uh, in that part of our country. And their democratic decision and stance should be acknowledged and enfranchised by the Irish government. And the best and most immediate way to do that is to allocate the two extra EU seats to the north. In the same way, I mean, I heard the representatives from Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael a few hours ago in this chamber come in and exalt the virtues of giving us a vote for president. The Taoiseach was in here last year and made a firm political commitment, as well as a commitment not to leave us behind, that came later, that uh, the Shamit should have a specific panel for the north. 
The people there should have the right to vote. And that was some, uh, summarily agreed by us all and put forward uh, in the Shannon Reform uh, Group's recommendations. So you have this talking out of both sides of your mouth, um, and you have the legal ability to do two things in this regard, uh, the presidential vote and the Shannon election, but then when it comes to the European parliamentary election, there is uh, a refusal to do so. I would finish on this last cat here. Like, Irish citizens in the North have rights, uh, Minister, or they should have rights, and the Irish Government is, or is supposed to be, the principal guarantor of those rights. So it is important, as the date for Brexit draws closer, that people rally in defence of the Good Friday Agreement, in defence of their general rights, and they take to the streets to protect those hard-won rights, if necessary. Thank you very much, Senator. Danila.